On the 8th of May 1929, after having spent a month in Santiago, Chile, Bernard Boutet de Monvel, along with his wife and daughter, boarded the steamship Avellana, one of the Blue Star Line's luxury five ocean liners, setting sail from Buenos Aires to London on their way back to Paris. The couple was photographed several times during the crossing. One shot shows them on the lower steps of the access ladder leading from the liner's upper promenade deck to the boat deck. The latter deck fitted with two emerging black torrade vans, a white tarp coveted love boy holder and two monumental funnels that were painted in the line's standard colors, red with a black banded top and an azure blue star on a white disc. The beauty of the ocean liner's cubist forms and oversized dimensions already fascinated Boutet de Monvel when he sailed from Le Havre to New York aboard the CGT steamship France in October of 1927. From its upper deck, between the intersecting masts and riggings, drawn tight by pulleys, like straight lines slashing the sky, he captured, with a simple Kodak Brownie camera, the procession of funnels, the rectilinear vans with their dark gaping cowls, the interplay of cabin doors and portholes, the abyssal gangways, the ventilator stacks and winches and hoists, the artist's magical vision transforming these perfect geometric figures into cubes, rectangles and squares in some instances, and in others into circles, discs and cylinders, either round or elliptical. Under exclusive contract to provide large format illustrations to Harper's Bazaar magazine on a regular basis, Boutet de Monvel based the illustration that was to appear in the September 1929 issue on one of the photographs he took of his wife and daughter during the crossing. Echoing perhaps the works he created a year earlier of a steel mill near Chicago, one of which is now in the Pompidou Center's National Museum of Modern Art. Notwithstanding the affection he had for his models, the artist undoubtedly focused the shot on the composition's modernity. It is ruthlessly tiled, or carrelé, to use the artist's own expression, in red ink, at a slight angle and in such a way as to re-establish the balance between the masses surrounding the frail white post fitted to the deck rail, the only element in the picture which is strictly vertical, along with, on the left, the post of the ladder's handrail. In the artist's vision, the latter, a remnant of a barrier, had become dispensable, like so many other details, crossbars placed under the rungs, electric cable sheets, automatic door closing mechanisms, handrails, etc. Apart from this vertical axis, which is there to serve as a visual anchor for the viewer, and the perfect horizontal line revealed in the latter's fourth rung, there is not one straight line or arc that is not leaning or tilting, perhaps symptomatic of vertigo induced by the ship's pitching and tossing. With bold, structured outlines that are as essential as they are incisive, each mass is modeled using small juxtaposed strokes called hatching, a technique employed by early Renaissance fresco painters, giving Boutet Monvel's overall design a dehumanizing, quasi-mechanical and cold precision. That same year, 1929, the American artist Charles Schiller, who was presumably commissioned to photograph the steamship Majestic, used one of his own photographs as the source for a painting he named Upper Deck, which revealed a world dehumanized by the advent of the machine age. Based, like Boutet de Monvel's drawing, on the machine's omnipresence, the composition's quasi-abstract geometric simplicity and the representation's almost photographic realism Upper Deck became an icon of precisionism, the first American modern art movement, the influence of which was felt right through to pop art. <laughs>